Hey there, fellows. So right here I've got me this lovely gearbox, it's for a lot of... And you might recall how some time ago we tried uh, making one see-through by cutting out sections of it. But when we made that transparent engine, that got us fired up, and now we want to try making us a true transparent gearbox. Let's do it. We make a fully transparent gearbox. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Now, to get this whole thing right, we need to properly model it. And as you might remember, epoxy resin, uh, polyester resins rather, they can't handle this sort of stress. And so we have covered the entire thing in clay in order to make the walls thicker. And as you can plainly see, in certain areas they have become thicker by 10 millimeters, in other spots by 15. That's to make it that much more durable. But yeah, we're almost done modeling this. We've already prepared a box, which we'll place all of this into, fill it up with silicone, and once that's cured, we'll remove everything, and we'll have the mold that we're going to use to make these bits out of polyester resin. Okay, now it is time to take this apart. Once that's done, we'll remove the casing that we've cast inside the mold. And just see what we've made. And we do have some experience with this sort of work. We have done this before. But we can't really predict what the outcome will be this time. Now, I have got to be very, very careful with this. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, this isn't exactly perfect. Even out the surfaces, there are some air bubbles here and there. Not the test piece, but the first bit of the box. And overall, I'd say it looks pretty nice. What do you know? Now, the good thing about this is that all of the spots that we're going to have to drill have been transferred to this bit. Meaning we won't have to measure anything and uh, figure out what should be where and so on. It is all right there, and that is very good indeed. Now we just need to finalize everything. Make it so that the shafts fit, as well as the bearings. All right, let's do some fine-tuning then. So we're trying to figure out how to make this transparent as it turned out frosted like any other bit we make using this method. When we made the engine that time, we mixed the same resin and applied it using a brush, and that's what made the whole thing transparent. Now, I am not a fan of that method, so this time I've bought a can of clear, degreased this piece, masked this area, applied the clear to both sides, and here is the result. And the difference is night and day. Here you've got the transparent area, and here it's frosted. And so we're at the stage of this project where we've got these lovely transparent bits of casing. The clear coat seeped into any pores, and the result is a more or less clear finish. Yeah, I'd say you can see through it fairly well. 
So now it's just a matter of assembling the gearbox. Here we've got all of the parts, they're nice and clean. And so let's commence the assembly. Check this out guys, we've got our lovely gearbox casing right here, it's all looking good. And we have done our very best to make this as transparent as we could. And indeed this is very much see-through. Though there are some distortions here and there, as the surfaces aren't all flat. A lot of this is actually oddly shaped. But the key thing here is that you can see all of the internals. And this time we have got a true see-through gearbox. Yes, the bell housing is made of aluminum, but there's nothing to see in there anyway. This is where the interesting stuff happens. The actual shift mechanism. That time we weren't really able to make it visible. But this time you can see the whole thing very well. You can see all three of the shafts that select the gears. The forks, dog clutches, gears, the whole lot. And I suggest we try it now and see how it all works. We have connected a power drill. And the reason we're doing this on the bench is, well, as we learned when we first started that transparent engine, uh, things tend to break. That one fell apart immediately. So we'll be turning the input shaft using a power tool. I'm holding on to the extension housing. The box is in neutral, so there is no torque transfer occurring. And you may start spinning it. So now you'll see that the input shaft is turning while the output shaft is staying in place. I am able to turn this any way I like, and all because the box is in neutral. And so there's no torque being transferred to the imaginary prop shaft and of course the wheels. But once I do go for a gear, for example, let's try first. And we can clearly see which dog clutch works with first and second, and which one is for third and fourth. With the stick leaning left, the shaft on the left is the one working, and it is connected to the fork that engages first and second. Turn it. Okay, better watch my hands. It's making a buzzing noise. I guess something isn't exactly sitting on center. In any case, the gear is in, that's all good. And now there is nothing I can do to stop this. Very good, and here we are moving along, going for second. It's having a tougher time because of the change in gear ratio. And now I do this and change the gear to third. The dog clutch just engaged with third gear. And then I do this and fourth gear is now engaged. The dog clutch is now engaged with fourth gear. And that's going to make this spin a lot faster. So that was fourth gear, and now we get to the most interesting part. I want to try reverse. Yeah, I'm gonna go for reverse. And now this has begun to turn the other way. And with the gearbox not being under any serious load, we won't be able to hear any noises made by the straight-cut gears. The gearbox is dry at the moment. We can't see what would be happening to any oil, how it'd splash around. But let's pour some in and observe. Watch it splash around, lubricate all of these parts, and just look on. So the oil level is where it should be, it's uh, marked right here. And now let's turn it and have a look. Hit it. Oh, that is some pretty intense splashing we got going on in there. And it's finding its way all around the box. All of the parts are getting doused. Including all of the gears, the shafts, the dog clutches, the bearings, and everything else. And that's with the drill only being able to give us this rotational speed. Oh, actually, this is how much it's capable of. I take it it's maxed out, right? That's the low setting. Oh, the low setting. Uh, give me high, then. Oh, this is looking very good. 
though we all notice that there is considerable foaming going on. That is not a good thing. Uh, yeah, cut it out, dude. No use allowing it to foam, Sergei. We won't be able to see anything. Okay, guys, so we have observed all of it turning and getting lubricated. We get the picture, and so now we're gonna have to... Um, it's all good and well with the gearbox on the bench, but it's gonna be way better with it on a car. So let's carry on. Right, so now we're about to find out whether it'll keep it together. I am super curious, but now we're going to find out how much stress the transmission is under while the car is moving. Start the engine. Hold your horses. I can see the prop shaft. Engine is still cold. Okay, grab a gear. Oh, I see you have, and, uh, where do you think you're going? Well, the curious thing is that it works. The wheels are turning, so is everything else. Excellent. Why is the dog clutch jumping around, though? The dog clutch is jumping around. So this is actually quite interesting. So engine operation isn't buttery smooth, right? It's sort of gyrating, I guess. And as a result, the dog clutch is moving around. Even though the fork is holding it in place. I have got a pretty good view of the reverse gear. Sergey, can you put it into reverse for me? But release the clutch slowly, please. Okay, it's in reverse. Now the torque is being transferred. Wow, this works. Switch it off. This didn't turn out half bad. Now it's all good and well on the lift. The wheels turn, the gears go in. And we could observe this all the live long day. This is a cool thing to look at. But let's go ahead and bring the car down. And do a bit of driving. Will the gearbox hold up? Well, we're about to find out. Okay, firing up the engine. Oh, I can see everything from up here, too. Neat. All right, let me just slowly... I've got it in first, and uh, now let's see... I am a bit worried. I so do not want it to fail right away. Here we go. And yeah, we are moving. Moving along and better watch the road and not the gearbox. But then I am very worried for it. Yep, things are moving around and rotating. And the car is driving. And that is just superb. Better not jerk the car around. Still hasn't quite warmed up. What's going on? Why isn't this revving? Oh, there we go. Yeah, might as well just get going. We do need to find out how this actually drives, after all. With all of those components under proper load. Is it really that bad? Probably is, I mean, shafts do snap sometimes. But while we're moving slowly, it is holding up. I'd say that's already a win. Transmission casing made out of polyester resin. It's holding up and that is good. I'm not doing anything crazy, no burnouts, but it is driving. I can probably flip around somewhere around here and drive back to base. Oh, 
This is scary. I would not want to break it prematurely. When is it going to be time? Well, I don't really know. Now we are driving uphill. That means additional load. And we're moving. There we go. After a bit of driving, I'm not as apprehensive about uh, giving it a bit of gas. Which I am. Very good. Let's drive. I say we keep going. Now I'm in second gear. Here I am moving in second. Terrific! It's holding up. I have got the box in second, and we are doing very well. I have gotten used to this, and uh, we're doing well. Here we are in second gear. I am not nearly as worried as before. Third gear, oh for real? The car is driving. This is excellent. Okay guys, the transparent box has held up, and this has been a 107% success. We're gonna keep this one, and you shoot us your suggestions as to what we can use it for. And so that's it for this video, catch you guys later.